once we have our mock-up completed in Photoshop, there's a common process that applies to some designs where you want to break your mock-up into small images and export them out to your site root folder so you can then bring them into Dreamweaver and use them when you're coding up the site. That process is known as slicing because it uses the Photoshop feature called the slice tool. So I'm going to uh, apply that slice tool to my mock-up here for my Christian Moore website. Um, it takes a little bit of strategizing before you start slicing up to know exactly how you're going to control it or how you're going to handle it in Dreamweaver. The main thing that I'm interested in slicing in this particular mock-up is the navigation bar. And I have already got a background pattern for that kind of blue, navy and white striped background that I see there in my mock-up. That is exported already as a 300 by 300 pixel background tile image and so I can easily control that by putting in a background image on the body tag of my um, of my website. So I don't want to export that pattern with these images of my navigation bar. So I'm going to quickly just make that layer invisible. And then I want to start slicing. So the slice tool, it's over here it's actually underneath the crop tool if I can't find it. Uh, the crop tool looks like that, so the slice tool is here. I'm going to switch that on. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a very wide slice all the way around that navigation bar. Now you'll find that the slice tool, it often locks into the edges of areas of high contrast or, or, or objects, and it's pretty trustworthy. So as soon as I see it snapping to the edges of that bar, I'll let go. And I can already see that that slice that I've selected has gone in there in underneath that amber kind of box uh, with uh, little resize uh, handles on the four corners and the four sides. Also with that slice, the Photoshop comes along and slices the rest of the canvas up. And I can see that here by these grey slices or the uh, slices with the little grey uh, label up at the top left hand corner of it. That's because whenever we slice an image in Photoshop, the whole canvas has to get sliced because Photoshop has to export the whole thing. It doesn't let you slice and export just part of it. It usually slices the whole canvas so you can export all of the picture that I see in small slices. So that slice that I'm after uh, creating there for my navigation bar, it's one big slice. I obviously want to get in there and break that down into lots of smaller slices. Uh, so that I get an individual slice from my home button, my tour button, music gallery and contact. So what I'm going to do is, I'm on the slice tool at the moment, I'm going to move over here and I'm going to change my tool to this slice select tool, which is slightly different. And what that allows me to do is obviously select, pull and drag and move slices around. But part of it as well is, up on this uh, toolbar right up the top, once I'm on the slice select tool, I've got this divide button. I currently have this top slice selected because I see that gold or amber type of uh, border around it. So if I click on divide, it allows me to divide that slice that's selected at the moment into different vertical parts. So I want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different vertical slices. So I'm going to click on seven there and I can see them pop up there in real time uh, behind it. That's fine. I'm going to click OK on that and I'm going to get back in here then with my slice select tool and I'm going to rearrange some of these vertical slices so that they match what I want. So that's the music button. Tour button is over here and then I've got that end part over here as well. So you notice that I'm not just slicing up uh, the home tour music gallery and contact and leaving the ends in with home and contact I'm actually putting two slices at either end um, so to keep those hyperlinks nice and tight. Right. As well as just slicing the main part of the of the navigation bar which I'm interested in even though I know that I'm going to be able to code up these content areas down here uh, pretty easily in, in Dreamweaver when I get to it I'm still going to take slices of them because as I'm coding it up in Dreamweaver, it's often a good idea to put div sections in for the different content areas that you want to create, and then just put these slices in as the background image of those content areas until you actually get them to code them up for real. It just gives your whole uh, 
your, your, your work in progress in Dreamweaver, it makes it look like the, the real website and gives you a, a, a lot of orientation about uh, where you want to go. Um, so I usually slice them as well and include them. So again, I need to get back in here to my slice tool and I need to select this whole area here and then I'll uh, break that up again back into my slice select tool click on divide I'll break that up into three vertical slices and I'll pull them into place so I'll get that content over here, over there I'll get the main content over here and I'll get a, a nice kind of margin in between them and then I'll do the same for the content areas at the bottom as well so back to my slice tool and I'll click and drag here and across like that and again I'll go back to my slice select tool and I'll click on divide and I want to divide vertically into three slices again and I'm going to rearrange those slices so they fit on nicely onto my three separate areas in that bottom area that I've selected so I'm quite happy with that uh, I've got my seven slices at the top and I've got each one of these content areas uh, separately sliced as well. Now, the last part of this slicing process is to save it and export it out to my site root folder that I'm going to uh, use in my Dreamweaver project. So I'm going to go up to my file menu and I'm going to go down to save for web and devices. Now this save for web and devices uh, dialog box is quite interesting because of a huge amount of power over what the individual slices get saved as. So for instance, in my slices at the moment, the preset is that they're going to be all saved as a ping 8 file. Uh, but there are lots of different options there. For instance, I've got JPEG and GIFs as well. And really it depends on what the slices contain that make you think what type of file format that you want to save them to. And you may not want to save all the slices as the same, uh, as the same format. For instance, uh, my navigation bar up at the top there, they are quite well-defined uh, uniform shapes. Uh, it would make sense that I would either save them as a GIF or a, a ping. Uh, the other thing about them is, is I have to have that transparency area at the background so that the background tiling of my web page shines through those areas. So that feature isn't available in JPEG, so I really have to go with either GIF or, or, or Ping. Uh, these areas down here, if there was uh, large areas of photographic images, for instance, uh, JPEG might be better to, uh, to use as a file format because it would reduce the, uh, the, the memory footprint of those areas. But I think uh, ping 8 for all of my slices here at the moment are fine. And uh, I want to just click on save. And then I just move in to my site root folder if I'm not there already. I just happen to be. So I'm on project 10 on my desktop. So I'm going to click on that. And uh, the things I can save as, well, I can save images only, which I would recommend. And uh, I want to save all slices. That's fine. So I'm going to click save there and all the slices are exported. Let me just prove that when I go to my finder. Um, mm -mm -mm. So I'll go into my desktop and I'll go into project 10 and I see the images folder and all my slices are in there in that images folder in the project 10 folder. And that was the slicing process in Photoshop.